Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Internet. Do you want to make any yeah. Uh, would you like to stand? We're going to have a word of prayer. Uh, most of you, or half of you, have already found out. Uh, one of our choir members, uh, Tammy Betker, across the street, she passed away this morning suddenly. She was 43 years old. We weren't sure if the choir was going to be able to sing, but it uh, looks like they're going to give it a go. Um, we are prepared to preach, but probably in view of what happened this morning, uh, we're going to uh, sing some choir songs and maybe have a special or two and have some prayer. And uh, we'll just make a couple closing comments. So the service will be abbreviated. And um, what all that we know is that she had woke her husband up at 2.30 this morning and she was dizzy. Uh, she had changed her medication. She had always been somewhat frail, had some issues, but nothing very major. And um, so she decided to lay down. And uh, when he woke her up this morning, she was face down on her pillow and her, her pillow was moist. So apparently she had vomited uh, they are going to do an autopsy and do some blood work, which they won't have the results for several weeks. So that's where we are. Uh, if you sense a heaviness, now you know why. So we're going to go on and uh, we're going to worship God. We're going to pray for Jeremy and the family. And uh, we just ask that you would uh, enter into worship as best as you're able. And then we'll have some closing comments. So with that said, um, I'm going to ask Paul if he'll come and we'll just have a, a word of prayer. And then we'll turn the choir loose and we'll see what happens. Okay, we'll take your burdens by an upraised hand. I know there are several other issues and there's a lot of sick folks and God understands. So uh, would you be in agreement, please? Glad to, glad to have uh, Millie back. She had two rounds, uh, consecutive rounds of shingles and uh, we're glad that she's with us. Brother Goss, good to see you. Dick Bowman, good to see you. Dick's going to be leaving for Florida in a couple of weeks, and um, it's just good to see him up and getting around. So there's other burdens and uh, other prayer requests, so just bundle them up in a bundle, and we'll lay them down at the, the feet of the Lord this morning. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're very thankful, God, that we have you to look to, Father, no matter the circumstances of life, Father God, when our hearts are broken, Father, when trials weigh upon us, Lord, when, when we're sick, Father, when we're needy, Father, in every way, Lord God, you're always there for us. And Father, as your people this morning, Lord God, our hearts are, are heavy, Father, as we have lost somebody dear to us today Lord God we're heartbroken for Jeremy today as we can only fathom what he is going through right now and so we ask you Father in his behalf Lord God that you give him strength Lord today that he does not have of himself Lord God that you would Lord lift his spirits Lord God and help him Lord God Father to to get through this, Lord, I pray today that you'd be that comfort, Lord God, that you've been to all of us so many times, Lord. Be with his family, Lord God, his 
Tammy's sister, Lord God, and others, Father, and those right here in this congregation, Lord, that have stood side by side with her in the choir. A lot of people, Lord God, suffering, Lord, this loss this morning. So we just pray for each one today. God, we're reminded, Father, in this very moment and hour, Lord God, that this, this life is short and that we're not promised one day to the next, God. So... Lord, in the light of that, Father, help us, Lord, to remember our hearts and our souls, God, today. That one day that we're going to, we're going to leave this place, oh God. And Father, we're thankful today to know that Tammy, oh God, no doubt loved you, Lord. And she lived a life for you, Lord. And her spirit, oh God, was so sweet, Lord. And we're thankful for that, God. But I pray, Father, today for this people that are here, oh God, every one of us. God, you saw all the upraised hands this morning, Lord, many, many burdens, oh God, those that have been dealing with sickness, Lord, and Father, all, all manners of things, oh God, Father, that weigh upon the hearts of your people this morning, God, we pray, Lord, as uh, you move through this service this morning, oh God, that you just bring encouragement, Father God, healing, Lord God, for those that are here, Lord, and those that can't be here because of sickness, Father, we pray for all of them today, Lord God, and, and then Father, above that, Lord, so we're reminded so freshly this morning, Lord God, we pray for the spiritual needs. God, each and every person in this place, Lord God, those that are listening via the internet, Lord God, our families, Lord, all of these that come to mind today, Lord God. Father, I pray you draw us up as your people a little closer today. God, help us, Lord, to, Father, be uh, renewed in our relationships, Lord God. Father, that we be in right standing, Father, right where we need to be with you. And then I pray, God, as we're reaching out to those around us, God, as we reach out to our families and our friends and our neighbors, Lord God, our co-workers, Lord God, and, and share this faith, Lord God, that you've given us, Father. Share this relationship. Help us, Lord God, to be fervent and passionate about those things, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to live a life, Father God, that, uh, Lord, that, that more than words would express, Lord God, what you've done in and through us, Lord God. We pray for that today. God, I pray for those that may be sitting and listening, Lord, right now, that Father, can't answer with a yes, Lord, if they're ready right now. Maybe they're not, Father. And, Lord God, I pray for those people right now, those that are sitting here, Father God, as we pray this prayer, Lord, that they would take this time right now, Father God, to get things lined out, Lord. Father, it's as simple, Lord God, as believing on you. And we know that. And we're thankful, Father God, that, uh, Lord, that you've called us into a life, that you've provided a way, Lord God. And so I pray, Father, for the lost amongst us, Lord. And, that you would just encourage and call hearts, Lord, right now, even through the song service today, that you would use this service, Lord God, that, Lord, somebody to come to know you, Father, and that they could one day spend an eternity with you. Lord, we know that there are other needs here today. God, I don't know every situation, but we pray for these things. We pray for our nation this morning and all of the things that are transpiring in our land. God, we just lift it all up to you and ask you, Father, to... God, we need a revival in our country, a revival in the church, Lord, not just in our country, but all over the world. And God, our hunger for you is great, Lord. We desire, Lord God, to see your will and way done, Father, in our, uh, even in our politics, Lord God. We pray and ask for that. And then, God, we ask, Lord, that you'd fill the pulpits of your country, Lord, this morning of, your, of this world, Father, that you would, uh, God, indeed uh, anoint and, and, Lord, use your ministers, Lord God, to, to bear the light of your word. Father, we love you this morning. We appreciate you, Lord God. We appreciate your strength and comfort in this day. And Lord God, we indeed look to you. We're dependent upon you. Again, we just lift Jeremy up, God. We pray that you touch him right now, right where he's at, Lord. And Father, we give you the praise and glory for all it's done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We just dedicate these songs to our sister. We were going to just dismiss the choir this morning, but Brenda mentioned this was her life, what she did here. She loved to sing. We had her scheduled for a solo part on a choir song probably next Sunday so that's what we're going to do we loved her 
Tammy was just wonderful, and we're grateful. And we've got a chance this morning to throw our burdens on God. Nobody has to leave with a burden today. We can share it with Jesus.
God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way he will make a way God will make a way where there seems to be no way he works in ways we cannot see and he will make a way for me he will be my guide hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way By a roadway in the wilderness, he'll lead me. And rivers in the desert will I see. Heaven and earth will fail, but his word will still prevail. And he will do something. in ways we cannot see, but He will make a way for me. He will be my guide and hold me closely to His side. Love and strength for each new day, He will make a way. Sometimes we go through situations that seem hopeless. We think that God has forgotten us. Oh, but he hasn't. He tells us in his word that he has inscribed us on the palm of his hand. And he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or even think. He can make a roadway in a wilderness, in a river, in a desert. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Do you believe that today? Has he done that in your life? I know he has in mine. He will make a way for me and he will be my guide and hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way oh he'll make a way with love and strength for each new day he will make a way God will make a way. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Why don't we take our morning tithes and offerings. Please turn to page number 486. 
number 486. Heaven holds. Yes, praise the Lord. Amen. Ultimate. 486. Earth holds no treasure but perish with you see. However, Heaven holds so Chad has a song this morning. You know, I told the choir, we were trying to decide whether to sing. I told him, if I ever die suddenly, you better sing. I want you to sing, because I made it. I've made heaven my home. She's there. She made it, guys. It's, it's sad, yeah. But it's also happy. She lived a life for God. She left a testimony behind of a love for every person she ever talked to. What a spirit that that lady had. I love Sister Tammy. She asked me to sing this song a couple of different times in the past few years and I stole it from brother Phil me and me and Tammy both love brother Phil but when I knelt the blood fell and it's one of her favorite songs so I'm gonna try and sing it sin is a captive it binds and it holds Satan to abolish your soul there's only one hope for
for your destiny. That one hope is found when you're down on your knees. When I knelt, the blood fell. Sin lost a battle. The Jesus went to the throne, presented his sacrifice to God alone. Father, it is finished, he proclaimed as heaven cheered this blood. Is for their redemption free and clear when I knelt the blood fell sin lost a battle the lamb had prevailed what made This road of life has led you to 
to a valley of defeat. You wonder if the Father has heard your desperate plea, but there is hope in that rugged place where tears of sorrow dwell. Well, good morning. We never thought when we woke up this morning that we were going to be dealing with this. But that goes along with the uncertainty of life. I want to get that Bible. I have a thought here that I wanted to share with you. In view of Sister Tammy's passing, as you all know, or most of you who know Tammy, (coughs) Tammy had an excellent spirit. (coughs) She was probably one of the most sensitive uh, saints that I know. You ever meet somebody that is so careful Uh, Every word that they say, uh, even their expression, they're they're just overly sensitive to be careful not to say anything or do anything that would offend anybody. And that was Tammy. Very sensitive. Uh, If she said something and she thought, I'm not preaching her funeral... But if she said something and, and uh, she thought that you took it the wrong way or anything that she said had hurt you, she uh, w- would go to great lengths to clarify and to make sure that you understood that she didn't mean any harm in any way. And that, my friends, is an excellent spirit. And how we thank God uh, for Tammy and her life. And as I was talking with her husband, 
uh, earlier this morning and having prayer with him and his sister. Um, it, was, it was just so comforting to know that although it, it's difficult to absorb, it is so tremendously comforting to know that when we leave this world, we really do leave it. And we walk through the experience of death and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And I, I was glad to be able to, to tell uh, Jeremy that his wife left a credible witness uh, there was no doubt, there was no question about it, uh, and the comfort of knowing that all that our loved one experienced was a change of worlds. And thank God, uh, there's sorrow, there's brokenness, there's heartache, but as Paul instructs us, we don't sorrow as those who have no hope. Thank God when we walk into a funeral parlor, when we walk out to the grave and go through that very difficult moment where the finality is a reality and your loved one is placed in the ground and you now have to walk away and the reality of, reality of it can be overwhelming but oh, the comfort to know that what really happened was our loved one just changed worlds. I mean, she really did. Any one of us who leaves this world, we're going to walk immediately into this eternal world, this spiritual world. And I know that people think that, oh, it's way, way out there. In, in the spiritual eye, it's it's... We can almost touch it. We can almost feel it. I know when my mother-in-law died, uh, Donna was sitting in the room with her and, um, and she was very near death. And, and she said to, to my wife, she said, Who, who's that man standing at the end of my bed? And Donna, you, you asked her if it yeah, you looked and there was no one there, but you, go ahead. Yeah, my, my wife said, does he frighten you? And she said, no, not at all. <laughs> That's how close that eternal world is to us. The testimonies of those that died in the Lord and the things that they've said and the things that they've seen and how people have said, what, what are all these angels around my bed for? <laughs> Thank God there really is life after death. There really is an eternal world out there for each and every one of us. And oh, how it behooves you and I to live in such a way that when that time comes, we will be ready. Amen. I, I, I was talking with uh, Sister Patterson here uh, just before the service. I didn't know that she had lost her 49-year-old son. And uh, she couldn't even talk about it without tears coming to her eyes. But the comfort and the strength that we're able uh, to lay hold of in times when something like that happens is just so comforting. And to know that it's not over we will be reunited one of these days. And that's why the Bible said that death, yeah, it's our loss, but it's heaven's gain. And what did Paul said? It said it's far better, far better to be absent and present with the Lord. And we thank God for that this morning. We thank God for what, what, what this book has done for us. 
I mean, this is just not any old book. This, these are words from the God, the eternal God, the true and living God who conquered death. He didn't only conquer death, he overcame the world. Amen. He, he said, be of good cheer. I have conquered the world. And uh, the choir just sang, or somebody sang, just bring your burdens to the Lord. And thank God there is somebody, there is a source, there is somewhere to turn to when our hearts are broken, when we lose our loved ones. And oh, we thank God for that and the comfort that we can find through the word of God. Thank God for the truth and the understanding that God gives us. And you know, Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This world and all the heartaches and all the struggles and all the difficulties that we go through, it, it can be overwhelming. It, it can kill a man. And, and several people can't deal with the pressure of this world and the heartaches of this world. And people are killing themselves. They're jumping off bridges. They're doing this, that, and the other. And Jesus come to tell us, look, no matter what happens to you in this world, no matter what heartache you, you, you endure in this world, there's not a heartache, a problem anywhere that one day heaven can't heal it. Amen? And so Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What do you mean, Jesus? I've overcome all the heartaches and all the difficulties and all the struggles. And, and, and overcoming this world means he was able to get through it and still remain faithful to his father. He was still able to, to cross that finish line. And I, I love what Paul said and, and uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, he, he said, uh, death is swallowed up in victory. Death is our last enemy to be conquered. When we leave this old world, the Bible says as a tree falls, whether it falls to the north or whether it falls to the south, that's the way that tree lies. And the last enemy that we need to conquer is death and Jesus conquered that enemy and he conquered sin and he conquered evil and he conquered all of that so you and I can conquer the world as well and listen to what he said he said death is swallowed up in victory how is death swallowed up in victory he said uh, death where is thy sting O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. For those who die not knowing the Lord, for those who leave this world who are not ready to leave this world, the Bible says the, the, the sting of death is sin. You don't want to die with sin in your heart. You don't want to die not being ready to meet God. That is a sting that will remain with you throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is the law. Listen to this, what he says next. The strength of sin is the law. What do you mean, Paul? The strength of sin is, is the law. If, if you break the law, sin overtakes you. Sin empowers you. Sin gets the last laugh in your life. Sin makes a fool out of you. But thank God, when Paul uh, died, what did he say? He said, the time 
of my departure is at hand. Paul knew that Nero was going to chop off his head, but he said, the time of my departure is near. And what did he say? I, he said, I am now ready to be offered. What, what, what do you mean, Paul? His death was a sweet-smelling offering that was going to go up to God. The man was going to go into the very presence of God. He said, I am now ready to be offered. And he says, I finished my course. I, 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 have, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I have kept the faith. So Paul could say, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, the last verse, he says, I, he, he says, uh, therefore, my brethren, be ye steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, in so much that your labor is not in vain. Amen? Thank God. It, it, overcoming this world is being able to overcome all the temptations, all the heartaches, all the burdens, all the disappointments. We've got to deal with so much, but Jesus said, be of good cheer. This thing is just temporary. It's just momentarily. We're just passing through. Your life, what is it? It's as a vapor. It, it, it appears a little vapor coming out of the teapot and it vanishes. That's what your life is. Thank God that's just a very, very minute port, part of our life. When we leave this old world, we go to be with God forever. My departure is at hand. Paul had an advantage over us. Over those who suddenly die. He knew his death was just moments away. But he was able to look death in the face. He was able to know that the experience he was about to go through is the diff, most difficult experience for mankind to go through. But he said, I am ready. Amen. My departure is at hand. I have kept the faith. I have finished the course. I have fought a good fight. What a trio of victory. And then he put his head down and just a moment's time, he left this world. And like Jesus told the thief on the cross, he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus looked at him and said, this day, this very, you're just moments away from it. This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. And that's where we go when we leave this world. And as heartbreaking it is to leave a loved one. I, I, I thought when my mother died, I, I just didn't know how I was going to react. I, I didn't know what emotions were going to take a hold of me. I didn't even know if I'd be able to put one foot in front of another. But the grace and strength and the comfort that came into my heart knowing that my mother instantly left this place and arrived at another place. And so shall she also be with the Lord. And oh, I thank God for that. I thank God for that. Death is our last enemy. And then there's a scripture that always comes to my mind. And in no way, and it came to my mind this morning as soon as I heard that. 
And Jesus, when he gave that statement, in no way was being insensitive to people's feelings who had just lost loved ones. But there is a much deeper truth that, that, that Jesus was trying to share with us. And this is what he said. He said, let the dead bury the dead. You and you and you and you and you come and follow me. Jesus wasn't saying, oh, you don't have time to go to a funeral. You don't have time to cry. You don't have time to be upset. But he was making a point. There are some things in this world more important than death. The sting of death is sin. You leave this world with sin in your heart, with sin in your life. I mean, it's over for you forever. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. It's as though, and I didn't have time. I wanted to take it apart. I wanted to look at all the commentaries. I wanted to try to get more out of what Jesus was saying. But in part, what he was saying is, the most important thing is, make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready. Don't let anything or anybody in this world cause you to miss that experience, which is inevitable for every man and every woman, and the only way we're going to bypass it is if Jesus comes. But death is going to be a reality. And, and there isn't anything in this world worth missing it for. And then Jesus comes in, be of good cheer, I've conquered the world. There, there, there was so much hurled at him. There were so many temptations. There were so many enemies. There were so many heartaches. His, his friends died. And, and then they, they crucified him. And then they murdered him. And thank God when he was just about to take his last breath, he said, it is finished. What's finished? The victory. He conquered the world. He conquered sin. And he opened the door of eternity and pardon for you and I when he said, it is finished. Thank God we can conquer this world and we can continue to go and continue to live. And, and I started to say, and God gave me such wonderful grace. I uh, was going back and forth to Columbus hospitals and... Um, still preaching, still doing the services. I, I don't know that I missed the service through that. Maybe I might have missed one. And my mother coming here for 40 years. And she had more friends here than she had in New York. And I thought, what a fitting moment. The timing of God. And my mother died and we had her viewing here. And the place that she loved so much and the people that she loved so much, she, 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 the, the night before she died, she told me, your people are treating me so well and so kind. She says, I don't even want to go back to New York. And I guess the Lord heard that prayer because... That morning she left. Amen? And she left this old world. So be, so, so, let the dead bury the dead. Now, you know dead people can't bury anybody. But he's talking about those people that weren't ready. Let the spiritually dead people bury the dead. You come and follow me. You see, there's more important. There's something more important going on here. And what is it? 
you and I are going to live forever in one place or the other. We are eternity bound souls. And it behooves you and I to be ready <clears throat> when we leave this world. Now, you know what? All you people that are 70 and over, you're all thinking about it much more often than these young kids. Maybe thinking about it much more often than the young married folks. But when you wake up every day and your feet are heavy and your body is heavy, you're reminded that this old earth is calling you. You're reminded that one of these days you're not going to be able to put one foot in the other. Amen? But the truth is we're all going to leave this world. And the truth is we're all going to stand before God. And the truth is we're all going to give an account of God of all the deeds done in our body. My God, if death does anything, it ought to awaken us. It ought to sober us. We, we were at Denny's funeral, uh, Sherman and I. And it was beautiful. It was just a sweet spirit. And the preachers were preaching in Russian. All the Russian people were there. And Denny, every time he'd say a few sentences, he'd look at me and Sherman and say, well, this is what he said, this is what he said, this is what he said. And I thought, my God, what a wonderful time to get the gift of interpretation. Amen. And it was just sweet. It was just sweet. And Denny, and your family, one is leaving and one is coming. That's the story of life. That's the story of life. Is it not? And so we woke up this morning and we've, we've come into an atmosphere that's broke our hearts. And I knew as soon as I heard the news and, and I, I was like this. I, I was ready to go. I was going to throw the chart out. I wanted to finish and go after that sixth seal. But in view of the heartaches and the sadness that we as the family of God are absorbing, and in view of the fact when one member of the body suffers, we all suffer. So to come in and have church in a normal way, would it, 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 the burden to preach just left me. And during the song service, I, I, I knew I had to say something. And that's what the Bible says and means. Be instant in season. I was in season last night. I was ready to go. But I'm out of season. And some seasons, you just got to walk by faith. You just got to just walk by faith. And trust that God will have his way. And God wants, God has a way that he wants to have. God wants to say something to us in, in every season of life. And never is there a more appropriate time to say it than when we're going through loss. We're going through difficulty. We're going through heartache. That's why the Bible says it is better. To go to the house of mourning. That's where we are right now. We've come to worship God, but we're in a mourning environment. A mourning, more, you don't understand, we're crying. I don't mean AM, I mean, you know. But it's better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting. And the wise man goes on and says, for, for this is the end of all men. Well, the house of mourning is a funeral. 
How in the world could it be better for us to be in a funeral than, than at a family reunion? Enjoying our loved ones, enjoying our relationships. But the wisdom of God comes along and said it is better. Why is it better to be in the house of mourning than at Cape Island? Or in a happy environment? Because it's in times like this that we're reminded that we feel in a more personal way this world is not our home. We're reminded that we're just passing through. You, you get into a house of feasting and the furthest thing from you is dying. And the furthest thing from you are the solemn thoughts of God. And the furthest thing from our mind is heaven and earth issues. And so we come into the house of mourning in a little more personal way. The, the Spirit nudges us and says, you hear about that death? You see that, that casket? You see that lifeless body in that casket? What's it telling you? It's telling you that we're next. It's telling us that one of us is next. And Brother Wilson always used to say, right now, the funeral homes have your casket and my casket. It's already in stock, just waiting for you to hop in. Yeah. You see, in, with, with, with all that's going on in this world, the things that are being hurled at our minds, the things that are tearing our emotions one way and another, the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs, the anger and the frustration and the happiness and the joy and the this and the pleasure. It's too much to process. But what the wise man is saying The, 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 the effort of guarding our soul, being awake to guard our souls, is not as vivid and not as strong when we're in the house of feasting. We're not thinking about dying. We're not thinking about eternity. We're not thinking about our own soul. I mean, we're having a hallelujah time. And that's why it's better to go into the house of mourning once in a while than the house of feasting because our, 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 our senses are stimulated. Our thinking is stimulated and soberness comes over us and we recognize, hey, I got to do something about my life. I got to do something about this sin in my life. I got to do something about this attitude. I got to do something about this jealousy and this pride and, and this hatefulness. And the house of feasting at that time, the, the chances are of you getting a hold of that and waking up are better in a house of mourning than in the house of feasting. Amen? What an outline, huh? Thank God. And one of the scriptures I was going to share with you this morning, and I'm going to close with it. And it's in Revelation, the 16th chapter. You don't need to turn there. But it's right after this divine ministry poured out a vial upon the great river Euphrates. And uh, I'm not going to preach the message, but when that ministry poured out a vial upon the river Euphrates, the great river Euphrates was a river that came right through Babylon. 
and all Babylon's resources and all Babylon's provisions come in through that river. But that river was also a stronghold. And it kept Daniel and Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego, it kept God's people in and it kept the enemies out. But this ministry, when this angel poured out the vial, that river dried up. I'm not going to let it out of the bag. You wait. But when the truth was preached and was, was preached against Babylon's stronghold, the river Euphrates, the only way that in the Old Testament they were able to get in there and conquer the Babylonians, God gave a divine thought to Cyrus and Darius and they dug out a channel and diverted the river. And while Belshazzar was in there doing all kinds of crazy things and having a, a, a drunken orgy, the river, the water went down. And the armies, the Syrian army and the Medes and Persian, they just walked in and they slaughtered the Babylonians. And do you know what the first thing they did was? They made a decree. Let's send God's people back to Zion. Now in the New Testament, when this angel poured out his thing, his vial, the river was dried up. And the kings of the east, so they could get in. And I'll explain it to you whenever I preach it again. The kings of the east was the word and the spirit and the knowledge and the understanding that people get from the truth. that river in New Testament setting? How do you dry up Babylon's rivers and fountains? You pour the truth out on them. And you know what happened when they poured the truth out on them? Three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of paganism and out of the mouth of papalism and out of the mouth of Protestantism. And they were spirits of devils going out to gather all they could gather to fight against the day of God Almighty. We are in the battle for our life. And you see it going on in politics. You see good and evil. You see righteousness and unrighteousness. You see right and wrong. And it's a battle. And Jesus said, in the midst of it all, I want you to be a good chair. For I have overcome the world. You can't, I can't, nobody can overcome the world. Nobody is going to get, come out of this world victoriously, triumphing, conquering without Jesus Christ. You aren't going to do it. It isn't going to happen. But I wanted to read this one verse. And in that uh, sixth vial, he, he said, Behold, I come as a thief. What do you mean, Jesus? I'm going to come at a time when you least expect it. I'm going to come in a moment. 
like a thief. It's an unguard. You're not expecting a thief. But Jesus said, that's how it's going to happen. I'm going to come in a moment. Whether it be death, whether it be an instant death, whether it be the Jesus splitting the clouds, he said, I'm going to come as a thief. In other words, most people are not going to be ready or expecting that. And then the very next thing he says, behold, I come as a thief. Watch, therefore. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and everybody sees the shame. You got to keep your garments. You got to keep that robe of righteousness up to date. You got to have your experience with God up to date. You've got to be ready to leave this world at any moment. That's why we have church. That's why we come. That's why we preach. That's why we sing beautiful songs. That's why we have testimonies to to keep people uh, uh, reminded of the fact. It's going to happen one of these days. We're going to leave. We've got to watch. We've got to pray. We've got to keep our garments. You've got to keep your garments unspotted from the world. You can't let an attitude. You can't let a, an emotion. You, you can't let sin. You can't let anything spot your garments. And there's so much out there. They're pitting Race against race. Uh, they're, 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 they're creating, uh, they're, they're destroying civility out there. They're, 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 they're trying to get people to hate one another and parties to hate one another. And, and the Republicans and Democrats to hate one another. But blessed is he that keepeth his garments. And that's your job. That's my job. Keep our garments pure, clean. And let nothing and nobody and anything. Try to spot or soil our garments. while our hearts are broken and while we go through a week of difficulty and heartache. I told Jerry, Jeremy when I had prayer with him on the phone and, and then when I went over and had prayer with his family, his sister, I said, in that prayer, I said, God, I said, Jeremy, I, I, I don't know what to say. There are no words that nobody can really say that's going to reach the depth of your broken heart right now. There's no choir song. There's no sermon. Uh, there's nobody that's going to say anything that is going to reach the depth of your sorrow. But there is one who can reach it. There is one who can lift us. There is one that can empower us. There is one that can give us the victory. There is one that can comfort us in ways that any of us know anything about. So if you're living on the edge and you're playing around and you're living carelessly, you can thank God you've come into a house of mourning this morning. Because God is reminding us. God is talking to us. Tell them. Let the dead bury the dead. But you come and follow me. Jesus said, let the dead not talking about dead people trying to bury dead people. He's talking about people that are dead to God. People that are spiritually dead. And 
In other words, don't you get careless and become dead spiritually. You keep following me. You keep your garments unspotted. You keep yourself alive. Because in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, bang, it's over. What a God we have. What a merciful, loving, compassionate God we have. And we don't have time to serve him, Brother Goss. We don't have time to love him. We don't have time to give him a little time once a week. And Jesus looking at people like that and said, let the dead bury the dead. That's a whole nother world. You come and follow me. Amen. Oh, Solomon, he's pretty smart, wasn't he? It's better to come to the house of mourning than it is the house of feasting. We need to close with something nice, Sherm. Something. Um, so we're here. God changed the whole order of the day. Now, I'm not saying this to, to, to be mean. I'm just saying this to make a point. How many of you were thinking about your spiritual life last night when the Buckeyes? Hmm? How many of you were praying? How many of you were asking God to bless in the service this morning? Not in a million years. You were running up and down that grid arm like you was crazy. Not, I'm not saying it's wrong. Amen? You should have been in Happy Valley that's not happy this morning. Amen? Amen. There's some things in this world that come first. And while we thank God for all the things that we enjoy and all the pleasures we enjoy, there are some things that are more important. And that is, come and follow me. You let those who don't know me do what they got to do. Let them do what they're going to do. But you, come and follow me. Watch. Keep your garments. Because if the devil can put some spots on your garments... And you leave this world. You're going to be that way forever. And you're going to curse the day. That you fell for Satan's trick. Words of life. Words of life. He that hath the Son, he that hath this book, hath life. Life that, that subsequent to this life, eternal life. And Jesus said, whosoever believeth in me, though he died, yet will he live Glory be to God. Brenda, play us something. Brother Sherm. So what am I saying? I'm saying in view, in view of what we awakened to this morning, in view of the fact 
that this world is not our home. Don't you think the only sensible thing to do is to do some soul searching? Does anyone sit in services like this and say to themselves, oh, I thank God I came to church this morning. I thank God that somebody nudged me, somebody pushed me hard enough to jolt me and awaken me out of my stupor. And I know that I'm not ready. I'm not watching. If something would happen to me, I know where I will go. I know what will happen to me. And thank God for a church and a people who thought enough about my soul to try to awaken me. Amen. They can't preach like this in Babylon because Babylonians don't want to hear it. That's why Isaiah said, let us be seven women will take a hold of one man and they'll say, we want to wear our own apparel and eat our own bread. Only we want to be, be married to, 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 the, to, to Christ because we're the bride. We want to be associated with Christ. So we take away our approach. But we, we'll eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. There's people out there don't want to hear what you hear every Sunday. And when a preacher tries to preach and dig around your heart, you got all these people, you know? Unclean spirits like frogs. You know why frogs' back legs are so strong? Because the moment they hear the truth, they start jumping. <laughs> you better go learn about frogs. They can live in any kind of water. They can live in mud, dirt, stink, swamp. But that's not how it is in Zion. My God, I can't wait to preach that message. Amen? So I want to tell you, as, as, hey, I didn't set the program this morning. The Lord did. The Lord did. You ever know about those frogs? They got those big old eyes. They can see everything but what they need to see. They got their eye on everything and everybody except what they ought to have their eye on, the Lord. <laughs> Glory be to God, Sharon. So would you, would you please do some soul searching. And if there's anything between you and your Savior, if you just feel that emptiness and you know there's something in your life that ought not to be there, what an opportunity God has given us this morning to do something about it. Maybe it's been a long time since you ever come to an altar. The altar isn't going to save you, the trip in itself. But the fact that you think enough about your soul, you're willing to make a public move. You know why that's important? Because Jesus had to make a public move. And naked in front of the whole world, he died but he did it for you and he did it for me. So Sherm, whatever you have for us, let's sing and give somebody, give everybody a chance to pray. Page 401. Yes, 401. Sister Rofi. Amen. Amen. Yeah. What? 
<laughs> yeah. She is in spirit, that's for sure. Anybody needs to pray, pray right where you are. I don't care. I'm not making the altar a test of salvation. It's just a convenient place to pray. But break through and let God know if there's any issues. And let God know you want him to help you. Because everything's at stake. You've been a great audience. Let's sing now. What a friend we have in Jesus. God bless you, Tammy. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. Sister Beth, come on down with her. With the, what God bless you. What a privilege to care. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forth. Oh, Dismisses. what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not care. Listen. Have we trials and temptations? Oh, we've got them. Plenty of them. Is there trouble anywhere? Come on, slide on. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Anyone else need to pray? God bless you. And we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share. Jesus knows our Before we sing that last verse, Jesus knows our every weakness. The Lord already knows what you need. He knows what I need. All you got to do is acknowledge. Lord, you already know. You know me better than I know myself. And God, what you know about me that's not right, I want you to forgive me. I want you to save me. I want you to encourage me. I want you to lift me. I want you to empower me. Because I don't want to miss it. Would you, would you pray that way or think about it at least while we sing the next verse? God bless you. Are we weak and heavy A load of care, precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends dis forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a soulless thing. Brother Troy, if you'll come, would you just bow your heads, please? I want to say something. Close your eyes. Troy is going to close this service. 
but I, I want them to also pray. Dick Bowman, Dick, you're, Dick's leaving for Florida. He's got cancer. We're going to be praying for you, Dick. Your wife can tell you what we said. We want to pray for Jeremy. And we want to pray for every family that's here. Sister Morgan, good to see you again. Thank you for coming, being with us the last couple of weeks. Dear saint of God. But God knows all about us. And while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I want to ask one more thing before Troy prays. If you've asked and you've acknowledged that God knows your every weakness and your every struggle, all I want you to do while everybody's eyes are closed and heads are bowed, if you just raise your hand and say, I want the church and I want God to know by my upraised hand that I need a touch from God this morning. Now I've seen a few hands. Any more hands? I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Any other hands? Ten. Any hands in the balcony? God bless you. God, God's looking everywhere this morning. I see those hands. God bless you. You don't have to keep your hand up. Anybody else? Any other hands? I see your hands in the back. God bless you. Hey, a lot of people have made an acknowledgement to God that they need some kind of help. Now, while Brother Troy prays, everybody that raised their hand and all of you that didn't raise your hand, let's together to say, God, whatever we need, whatever I need, please don't let me leave this service without receiving your help. Those of you watching by internet, you say the same thing. You pray the same prayer. And if your heart is honest and you're sincere, I can guarantee you on the authority of God's word, God will touch you. Brother Troy. Heavenly Father, we're thankful, Lord, that you're not just a Lord of the good times and that house of feasting that we spoke of this morning, Father, that your word speaks of, Father, but you are also the God of the morning, Father, and the house of mourning. And Father, you said that those who mourn will be comforted. And Father, we pray for your comfort this morning, Father, for this loss that we've experienced, Father. And as we look out into the audience, Father, we know that there's many that have experienced these losses, Father, even recently, Lord. And Father, we not only pray for Brother Jeremy this morning and the comfort and the help that he needs from you this morning, Father, but we... Just lift these others up as well, Lord. We think of Brother Denny and his family. We think of all the widows and widowers, Father, over the years that have gone through this, Lord. And we just ask that you would bless them this morning, Father. Lord, we're thankful for your honesty in dealing with our hearts yes. this morning, Father. And Lord, we just pray that those that are not under the ark of safety, Father, that Lord, you would speak to them, Lord, that you would soften their hearts, Lord, that you would show them the love that Christ has for them, Father, that you have for them, that you would give your son, Father, because you loved us so much. God, we just pray that you would help us all to just get a grasp of that this morning, Father. And Lord, that you would allow all of us to draw closer to you, Father, that you would draw us closer. Lord, we think of these that are uh, traveling and that will be away from us, Father. We yes. just pray for their protection and blessing, Father. Lord, we just pray that you would be with them every step of the way, Father. And Lord, we're just thankful. Lord, for the ministers of your word, Father, that are faithful, Lord, to it.
And Lord, we just pray that you would continue to bless the preaching of it and Lord, the living of it outside of these walls, Lord, that we may reach others, Lord, that are in need of that healing, Lord, this morning. And Father, we just ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Before you, did, before you dismiss, in view of um, Bev Green's funeral, which is at 3 o'clock, and various people in the congregation are going to be attending, and in view of Tammy's passing, we're, we're going to cancel the evening service. Those of you that want to go up, or those of you that may want to,